Okay, so now that we have our development environment set up, it's time for us to start building our actual application. The first thing we need to do is get our Redux store set up in our application so we can start putting stuff in it. So first things first, in app.js, not the component, but our, in, our entry file, we need to bring in the things we need from Redux. So those will include a couple of functions. We first need the create store, which will help us create the store. We need one called apply middleware which will apply middleware, obviously. And then we also need compose, which will help us compose a bunch of middleware together into one single middleware function. And all that comes from, not React, but Redux. We now need to bring in our trusty provider component, which will give us our Redux store to our entire application. We need to import the thunk middleware from Redux thunk. And then we need to import our top level reducer, which we'll, we will create here in just a little bit. Okay, so now we need to create our store. So we'll use the create store function to create it. First thing we need to pass it is our reducer. The second thing we need to pass it are anything we're going to use to kind of change the store. And we want to compose all those together into one function. And luckily, Redux gives us that function to use to do that. And so we're going to use the apply middleware function to apply that middleware. And then I'm also going to paste in a little piece of code here and all it does is it checks if the windows the window.devtools extension exists if it does it goes ahead and calls that otherwise it just doesn't do anything the windows dev tools extension i highly recommend you download you can get it for chrome and it will allow you to see what is in your store and see all the actions that have been going through right in the dev tools i highly recommend it if you don't want to you don't have to this piece will only include it if it exists so now that we have our store, we need to make sure that it's given to our whole application. So to do so, we need to make sure that we wrap our application in the provider component, and we need to provide the store to the component. So we can do that very simply down here, and I'm just gonna do it in multiple places, but give it a provider, and we're gonna pass it a prop of store, and that store is gonna be our store. And so now we've put our application inside provider, and then we put all that inside app container. App container is purely there to help us with hot module reloading. But the provider takes a prop, and that prop is the store. And that is how it makes sure that it passes down our global store to our application and all our components. And so the last thing we need to do is we need to create our top level reducer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new directory called reducer. And inside there, I'm going to have a file called index.js. We will make sure that our reducer directory follows the same kind of path that the data is kept in inside our store. And you'll see what I mean by that as we get farther and add more things to our reducer. But for now, in this file, we're going to keep things simple. We're just going to export a very simple reducer that has nothing in it. But we want to set the path for making it easy to change in the future. So the first thing we need to do is bring in combine reducers which is a function from the Redux package, and it allows us to combine a bunch of reducers all into one top-level reducer that is then passed to our store. So then we just need to make sure that we are exporting whatever comes out of combined reducers. And that's it. Now let's just restart our server. But as you'll see, everything's the same here. We haven't changed anything. Well, that's because we haven't actually changed our view or anything like that. But now that we have our Redux store all set up, in the next video, we're going to concentrate on getting the character data into our application.